everybody, this is Anne. I love a new pottery tool. It inspires me to experiment and see what I can make with it. Sometimes it can be frustrating though when I feel that I'm limited to the choices of tools available. At times I'll throw a form or look into a texture that I want to recreate, but I can't find the right tool option to do it. In this video, I'm going to show you an easy option to make your own affordable tools where the only equipment you need to make it are things you have around the house. How will I do this? With polymer clay. You can find polymer clay in any craft store and many department stores. Prices may vary, but it's very affordable, it comes in all kinds of colors, it's easy to mold, and it'll harden and cure by baking it in your oven around 275 degrees. First I'll show you how to make your own profile rib. I challenged myself to throw a tumbler with a complicated profile to see if I could make a rib to recreate that pattern. First I needed to make a template of this cup's profile. One way to do this is by using a tile layers contour gauge. I found this one at the hardware store for about 10 bucks. I just placed it flat on the table up against the side of the cup. I began to push the teeth tight to the curves and along the top. I then placed it down on a piece of paper and traced the shape. I cut it out to make the template. That works. Now let's make the rib. I opened two packages of polymer clay and stuck them together side by side. I rolled them flat so that one edge is a bit higher than the other in a wedge shape. I laid the template so the curved edge is pointed to the thin side. One tip is to move the clay right to a cookie sheet before you cut it so you don't distort the profile, but for the video, I'm just cutting it on the table. The wedge shape will help with stability for gripping on the thicker side, but pushing into the clay on the thinner side. For a better grip, I cut a hole into the middle of the rib. Now that's what I wanted. Now all I need to do is put the cookie sheet with the rib on it in the oven at 275 degrees. The package says it's 15 minutes per quarter inch. I just baked it for an hour. Now I'm going to use a rib that I made earlier and see if this works. I threw a thin cylinder. I wet the clay and flooded the bat with a wet sponge to avoid friction. I then pushed the clay outward against the contour of the rib. Shoo! This one's very complicated due to all those undulations. I cleaned up the jagged edges with a damp sponge. I trimmed away the excess clay around the rim and softened and rounded it. And here it is beside the original that's already bone dry and is shrunken down. Pretty darn close. Awesome! Here's another version with a much less complicated profile. I thought it'd be fun to make a set of mirrored profile cups. Two of the cups were formed with the wider part of the profile on the bottom. The other two cups were made by turning the rib upside down. When you display the cups as a set, they should fit together. Oh, those will be fun to decorate. The good thing about the polymer clay is that you can recycle the scraps to make other things until the clay is ultimately baked. Now let's try making a contoured spreader. Using the wedge clay I rolled out earlier, I took a clear ruler and cut around the ruler's end. I placed the ruler about a half inch from the thin edge parallel to it and made five evenly spaced marks. I pushed the blunt end of a paintbrush down into the clay along those marks. I then trimmed away the distorted edge of the thin side. Again, I added a hole for a better grip. And here's one I made earlier. I just pushed it into the side of the piece to give it evenly spaced ribs. I 
I made this piece earlier where I took my time to create the texture, then cleaned up the ribs with a damp sponge. You can even make your own foot ring profile. I started by sketching out a small profile of what I wanted on a piece of paper. I wanted a tool that I could use not only on a mug, but perhaps on a wider bellied piece, so I measured out a wedge-shaped handle that could fit even under a wide bowl, perhaps. I cut this out, then placed it on a rolled out slab of clay. Again, I used the X-Acto knife to cut it out. My edges were a bit ragged, so I used the blunt edge of the paintbrush to round it off. Here's a vase I threw where the foot is flat and the piece looks like it's growing right out of the bat. To give it a definition, I'm going to use this profile tool that I made earlier. I just wet the piece and flooded the bat with water. Then I push the tool right into the foot. I cleaned up the clay along the top and the bottom of the ridge with my finger to get this polished look. Polymer clay can also be used to make texture tools. I've seen many people make the dragon's teeth texture made with the church key bottle opener. The only one that I had was this funky can opener, which was not very convenient to use. I recreated the end of that tool so that now I have a much more elegant tool to use for my texture. Polymer clay takes on very intricate details, so I can mold it over designs that I want to capture. This leaf is a good example. Now I can use the stamp to make a negative image, and I can use the polymer clay to create the inverse of the same image. There's so many other tools I'm sure you can think of to make, and the best part is that you're only limited to your imagination. I would like to hear your ideas in the comments section below. Thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It also really helps us out if you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.